So we're at National Indoor RV Center here in uh, Lawrenceville, Georgia. And we're fortunate that this Spartan frame is here. Uh, they teach a lot of uh, Spartan maintenance classes here and they teach enough of them that they either own this thing or they just have it parked here because they teach so many of the classes. So one of the things that NIRVC has is uh, classes. And here's Mark kind of sneaking on, kind of sneaking in on this class. Boy, does he blend in. You would never know. Except for the camera with the microphone on the end. So we are going to get a uh, golden opportunity to talk about different things here. Now, I'm going to see how my uh, overflight uh, GoPro video did when I get back here. And I just wanted to talk now about a few things. So I want you to see. This is a 605 horsepower uh, motorhome frame here. So obviously it's gonna have the big tires in the front and the big tires in the back. But this is a uh, 365 tire. Just look at, look at how wide this thing is. This thing is just what? giant. We just had shocks put on our rig. So those shocks there are Bilston. We had Coney shocks put on. Don't know which is better, but uh, I'm a big advocate of doing all your studying on IRV2.com. And as far as Numar products, my disciple is a guy named Dutch Star Don. Don't know if he watches the channel, but Don, I can tell you that if you told me to go jump off a cliff, I would. Okay, oh. so on... Um, this Spartan frame, the only thing I don't like is I don't like their seating. <laughs> On the Numar, much, much better. A little cozier, yeah. yeah. What's nice when you look at a frame like this and you go, what's in this secret little compartment on the side here? And you see that there's all sorts of information cables and airlines and electric lines and different things here. But on this side, this side has these hoses that are for the fuel and there's another one for the fuel so you can see how the the uh, hoses are segmented so you know if you ever have to troubleshoot this thing and you ever had some issues and you can peel these things open you know you would have to crawl in the bays and reach up here but you can get into one side and one side is control cables and air cables and things and the other side is the fluids I just recently had, like literally yesterday or the day before, I had this hose replaced. You can imagine how easy that was to get at. What is that? That's the radiator hose mm -hmm. through the uh, bathroom. I had this lower radiator hose here replaced down here. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. what they did through the bathroom? Yeah, and I had way? this hose replaced. If they did all ones that I told them to do. I told them to do all of them. Remember, this is Spartan here. Uh, we have a freight liner. We have a freight liner. You know, uh, one thing I'm noticing in here, this is a Spartan 605, and there's three belts on here. There's this belt here that just runs the fan with the idler, and then there's this belt here that runs the alternator, and that's all it runs is the alternator. And then this belt here runs the air conditioner. Yeah, so they have three belts, so I only have two. Uh, this thing's really bomb-proof looking compared to mine. Uh, that's the uh, extra radiator water. Here's your DEF, diesel particulate filter. One thing nice about Spartan, 
is this side compartment, you open it up and everything you need is there. Here's your air dryer filter. Then here's your starting batteries. The nice thing about the Spartan, this filter here for the air dryer, for the air system, for the air brakes on mine, let me show you where it is. On mine, it's sitting like right up here somewhere. Remember, my motor home is on top of here. The guy has got to be a circus contortionist to be able to get in there. I've already had somebody at a Freightliner dealer take out my drive shaft so that he could replace that filter and then put the drive shaft in. So we all struggle with whether or not we should have the super duper uh, towing insurance coach net or something a lot more economical like Good Sam's. Let me show you why you want coach net. When you have a uh, motorhome that's like this one we're looking at right now, this giant frame, and of course the motorhome is on top of it, when you have to have it towed, they have to go in, the tow truck driver has to be savvy enough to go in and disconnect that connection on the uh, rear differential slash uh, drive shaft. And he has to do it on both ends because he has to take this entire shaft out to be able to tow the vehicle. That in itself, how difficult it is to get at this and to have the right tools. You want somebody that has been around the block enough times with motorhomes so that they're totally comfortable with doing something like that. If that shot turns out, that shot in itself should tell you why, if you have a big rig, you need CoachNet. Okay, we're, we're stopping back here at the uh, CoachNet uh, booth. Yesterday we stopped here and we talked to Haley, and she was so good with her answers that when we were having breakfast this morning, we are actually thinking about her. Now, I didn't know <laughs> that I was thinking about Haley by name, but I was thinking about her, and Sue said, you know, we should really stop back there because you had a lot of uh, good answers. I had a lot of things screwed up. Um, what I did in a nutshell was I've always had CoachNet from day one. But I was telling people that the reason you want CoachNet is obviously you guys send the biggest, baddest trucks because you kind of get it more than most people. And uh, I wanted to be in that club. I wanted to make sure the right equipment was sent. But... Uh, the caveat of you needing roadside service versus needing service because of an accident, I erroneously always thought that CoachNet was the only one that stepped up to that accident scenario when in fact I found out that that's wrong and you explained it to me uh, with the insurance being involved and there's some hierarchy, you know, the police show up at your accident and then the police's first priority is to get your equipment off the road they don't want to be monkeying around with the customer going, oh, you know, I have a good Sam's or something. They just get everything off. So then after the equipment is removed, then it gets towed somewhere else. So uh, could you help clarify, you know, what I just set up here, what I had wrong? Definitely. So in that situation, it is always the police who are going to, like, take over um, mm -hmm. because they're not going to wait Thank around you for your much. roadside company. They're going to be like, no, we're getting someone out immediately. We're going to um, we're going to get that taken care of. Um, and they don't really give you a chance for that. And so what happens is, is um, when you end up having to pay for the tow bill, you have the option of going to your insurance company and saying, hey, will you guys reimburse this? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's either not your benefits or you're not gonna reimburse it for whatever reason possible. Mm -hmm. CoachNet does have a benefit where um, if we do have an insurance denial letter that says, no, we're not gonna pay this, we do reimburse up to $500. So you do have a backup plan. Right. Unfortunately, we just can't take a super decision of the police. Right, so, so uh, as, the, as my backup plan, when I, uh, checked again with progressive it was kind of ridiculously cheap to add the rider for my motorhome you know i don't want to say exactly what it was it was like 20 between 20 and 30 dollars 
for this giant 45,000 pound motorhome. And then it was nominally maybe about $10 to hand added for my Honda. So I certainly did that. But the other advantage of your uh, towing insurance company is, is you don't play the game of you're 100 feet off the road. You know, you may or may not have somebody be able to come out to your campground to be able to pull you out. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many YouTube channels we saw where somebody's being pulled out by other campers with other 4 by 4s and you're wondering, like, how come the tow companies aren't showing up? So uh, your company does that. And also, when you uh, drive the coach from a breakdown to a facility, you don't play the game that you'll only pull, you know, go 20 miles or something, right? Yeah, exactly. So where are you going to most likely experience a breakdown in a campground, in your driveway? Like, you're going down the road, you blow a tire, that does happen, but you're more than likely going to wake up and your slides are not going to go in, your awning is not going to retract, or you wake up and you have a flat tire. So that's where CoachNet comes in, and we still send mobiles, we'll send tow trucks, we'll send winch trucks out directly onto you on site. Mm -hmm. um, as long as we can, ex we, as long as we can access you, we're yeah. going to get to you. So yeah. we don't have that. Oh well, you're in a national park and it's 100 feet off. I made it. It's always going to yeah. be off. Of Hmm. So. Let me look at my list of reasons why I won't come and, and uh, deliver on your service. So, yeah, so what so. what is the uh, CoachNet yearly rate right now? Um, for a motorized package, mm -hmm. um, it's two forty nine uh, to sign up and one sixty nine renewal rate. So your rate does go down. Okay. And for our towable package, it's one seventy nine to sign up and then one forty nine every year after. Again, okay. CoachNet's not like oh sign up for sixty dollars and the next year it's like two hundred dollar renewal. You know, so your rate stays low. That, well, I think we got nice. all our questions answered. Answered when Sue and I are having breakfast tomorrow. If I'm still thinking about Haley, we'll stop at. We'll be back. Either I'll that be or ready. I'm going to be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Haley. You're Appreciate it. So here we go. This is a GoPro fly through of a Spartan K3 uh, chassis for our motorhome. Typically uh, about a 42 to 45 footer of the 605 horsepower motor. Uh, the last fly through I did was actually a Freightliner frame. I did that on February in 2020, and it's episode 104 if you're interested to see that. This frame comes with the Michelin 365 uh, tires in the front. Those are literally the widest and biggest, baddest tires you can get on a motorhome. And if you look at the thickness of the steel on all of the bracketry here and the linkage of these uh, front end components, you can appreciate how heavy duty it is. And that's why a lot of folks that are optioning out and ordering their motorhome will choose, in fact, to specify the Spartan K3 because it's rated to pull 20,000 pounds. So here's a great shot to remember next time you're thinking about getting a little chancy driving in grass or heaven forbid mud. Every time you go off of asphalt, gravel, or concrete, this is the ground clearance you're compromising. You're going to see some canisters here that are attached to the linkage right there with square on the screen. Uh, that's the mechanism that locks the tag axle in place when you're going forward after you're going a certain speed and will uh, not allow them to flop around when you're going down the roadway. And it's only when you're going very slow that those uh, canisters will unlock and allow the rear tag axle to swivel. I have to hand it to Spartan. Those two cabinets that we just passed by are arranged so much better than the Freightliner one. It's, uh, it's almost comical. Uh, everything here is laid out, I think, better on the Spartan. A lot easier to dive into the back of that engine to work on it. Here you'll see that there's a def fill on the driver's side as well as the passenger side. So there are plenty of guys out there that own motorhomes that can dive into these things in this chassis and work on every bit of it and I really tip my hat to them. 
For the rest of us, like me, that has to go to a repair facility, you want to go to a place that has the ability to have the staff to work on this thing and to be able to understand what they're going after. I maintain there are some things to work on back here that unless you're standing and you're sticking your arms up into the frame, for the life of me, I don't know how you can work on it. Working on a creeper on your back must be horrible. We have an entire playlist of the places that we've went in the past that we've had really good experiences with. All of these places have lifts and or pits to be able to work in. They have the staff and the tools and equipment and knowledge to be able to work on these complex, expensive pieces of machinery. Once again, as we wrap up here, Sue and I would like to thank everyone for stopping in every Sunday and checking us out. We also invite you to take a look at our playlists that we have assembled. We've assembled playlists for every state that we've visited and all of the episodes that relate to the things in that state. Really a great resource when you're gonna visit an area to see if you wanna do what we did. Until then, We'll see you next week.